what, what, what your uh, who going to do is start with the basic with you. And some, some people can't stand that. They, they can't be patient enough when, when the who start with the basic. They don't know what you know. Y'all got it? And, and if you're going to see what you don't realize is that when you meet the who, you become a representation of the who when you leave them. You're going to go and say, the who told me. Right? And so they want to make sure that when you leave their presence, you're going to be on the right path. Right? Exactly. You got it. So, so you got to go into those environments with a heart of humility. Y'all got going there ready to glean and to, and to suck up everything that you can, you can get in that particular uh, uh, first encounter. Right? Y'all got it? Dr. Mike Murdoch said in one of his books, the difference between a season is a person. Say that. The difference between a season is a person. In other words, the people that you allow to come into your life can change the season of your life depending on what they bring into your life. Y'all got it? And that happens sometimes subconsciously and unaware to a person that ain't paying attention. Right? They allow people to come into their lives and before, before they recognize it and realize it, that person then changed the whole direction of their lives. They've gone in a whole other direction that God never told them to go in because they allowed somebody to come into their life and change the season of their lives. You got to know when to tell folks, I'm not in that season. That's, I'm not in, that's not my season. You got it? Amen. Amen. And so, so we, we want to be careful, right? Uh, in Joshua 1 and 1, four individuals are mentioned. Moses is mentioned. The Lord was mentioned. Joshua was mentioned. And none, Joshua's father, was mentioned. Y'all got it? All of those individuals were instrumental in Joshua becoming a success. Y'all got it? Now, we know uh, that the Lord was the most important one. And we may talk about that in, in a few moments. You got it? But the Bible said Joshua, uh, and Nun, Joshua the son of Nun. Right? And so what that tells me, and, and whenever you read scripture and it starts talking about genealogy, uh, so and so begot so and so and so and so begot so and so and so what it's saying is all of those individuals were instrumental in that in that family tree they made significant impact y'all y'all got it to the next generation and so here because the Holy Ghost chose to give Joshua's father props that means he must have raised him right y'all y'all got that means he had a positive uh, indelible impact uh, on Joshua's life. I believe that prepared him for Moses. Y'all got it? Because Moses wouldn't have just picked anybody. Right? He just wouldn't have picked nobody with their pants hanging down sagging. Right? Because what you have to understand is, is, is Joshua was allowed in the inner circle. Now, Moses leading two million people. You got him? But he picked Joshua to be in his inner circle. And, and frankly, aside from Sister Moses, you couldn't get no closer to Moses than Joshua. Y'all see that? Amen. And so, 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 so that meant that, that his father was, was, was significant in his life. The Holy Ghost chose to, to, to talk about him, right? Is, is that all right? all right? And then, of course, in the Bible it talks about uh, Moses and it talks about the Lord. And so my point is, in every stage of your life, uh, God has positioned certain people to help you to become a success, right? And you need to pray and ask God to help you uh, by way of the Holy Spirit to recognize them uh, when they show up. Y'all got it? In every stage of your life, God has positioned certain people to help you uh, to become a success in that stage that you're in 
uh, at that particular time. Y'all got it? And, and it's a golden opportunity. You know, I was, uh, oh, man. I was considering a, a, a business venture, a venture, and uh, Sister Kyle and I, and I was, uh, I said, it's a golden opportunity. This is going to bless somebody. And as I was meditating on, you know, whether or not I should, you know, dive in on the, on the next level, I turned the television on, man of God, I never saw him before in my life. And he said this. He said, a lifetime opportunity has to be taken advantage of during the lifetime of the opportunity. Did y'all hear that? He said, a lifetime opportunity must be taken advantage of during the lifetime of the opportunity. Y'all got it? And then he said, because God will give you the right of first refusal. Y'all got it? See, if you don't take advantage of the opportunity, what he'll do, he'll give the opportunity to somebody else. But he will give you, he's given all and going to continue to give all of us the right of first refusal. That means he's going to give you the option to say yes or no to the opportunity. And I'm telling y'all, some of y'all in here, God, I've given multiple opportunities. And you, through abdication of making a decision, lost the right to first refusal. And so he said, God will give you the right to first, uh, to, uh, uh, first refusal. You know, the Bible said, the Bible two or three, we didn't that. And the Holy Ghost said, hit me three times in a red quick. And then he said this. He said, if you don't grab a hold to an opportunity while it's passing by, it will pass you by. <laughs> It'll pass you by. You got it? And I said, oh, Lord, I, I, hear you. I heard the voice of God. Even though it came through a vessel I never saw, never heard his voice. But when he spoke, I heard God speaking to me. And, and so I told my wife, you know, the Lord said, don't, don't let this opportunity pass by. And for me to take advantage of the opportunity during the lifetime of the opportunity because I have the right of first refusal. And I know it was first refusal, but because when it was presented to me, they said somebody else came up in their mind, but God spoke to them about me. Y'all right, right. got it? Amen. And so uh, my point, God have people stationed along the, every area of your life, every, every dispensation of your life, and you got to stay sensitive so you can, you can hear and recognize those people when they show up because they're there. Y'all got it? They are there. Amen? Now listen, some of these people you will have a relationship with. Some of them you won't. And, uh, you know, can I confess? That part right there used to bother me because I used to want to have a relationship with the people that I felt like could pour into my life. Am I helping anybody? And, and I found out that, you know, sometimes God will have people to pour into your life and, and, and you won't even be able to get close to them. You won't be able to get close to them, right? But you got to be able to recognize, though, even though I can't get as close as I want to, God using that person to speak to me and to minister into, into my life. Y'all got it? You know, I found out that, that you know, Successful people can only have so many people in their inner circle. So many, they, they, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you got it. It came to a point in time where, where the crowd, the people in the crowd couldn't get as close to Jesus without going through the inner circle. They had to find somebody in the inner circle and tell them to go in and ask Jesus could they have an audience. And people get... They can get a problem with that. You know, I just can't walk in past the door. I usually can walk in the church and just and just go in past the office. Well, well you know, sometimes you get to a point where you cannot, you can't do that no more. That don't mean pastor getting high-minded or looking down his nose. Got Alex out there. He's bigger than the door. You know, you can't get by. 
I said that in Addison knew exactly what I meant, didn't you? I said that in a positive, that was, that was male affirmation. That's, that's what that was. It was we, you knew it. You knew it. You knew it, didn't you? You knew it, didn't you? you knew it. That was male affirmation. That was not a put down. So don't be rubbing on Alex back. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it, Pastor. He didn't. He just say anything. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> he understood exactly. He's saying, yeah, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. No, I am. I ain't. That's all with it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know that's right. That was male affirmation. So, so listen, some people... <laughs> That's just this guy. She, she, she a loving person. It, it, you know, sometimes you don't think I'm as loving. But I am. I am. <laughs> she, I had to defend myself because she in the truck. I'd be getting it all. Well, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. And I'm like, the boy all right. I'm telling you. <laughs> Lord, how mercy. Where am I? We was a far off or a far close. Yeah. All right, so some of them you have, these people, the who's in your life, some of them will have, uh, you have a relationship with, and some of them you won't. And, and that's important because perhaps some of you were like me, thinking that anybody that God uses to, 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 to bless your life or to give you instructions as it relates to being successful, you always have a relationship with them. You got it. And that's not always the case, and you can't be offended about that. Y'all got it? Uh, listen, some of them will be saved, and some of them won't. Y'all got it? Because one of the things God has had to do, you know, over the years is drop certain biblical wisdom in ungodly vessels. Y'all got it? Because perhaps it may not have been anybody in the kingdom that was ready for it. You got it? I believe he does that quite often in, in the area of science and, and medicine and, 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 and inventions and all of that kind of stuff. Y'all got it? Because a lot of times, you know, the world will be wiser than the children of of, of, of God because they're always after something, trying to find out something, trying to... I wonder what's down there in that hole. Right? It's dark down there. It's deep down there. Throw a rock in there. Don't want to hear it hit bottom. I think we ought to go down there, right? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. Right? But somebody going down there, and they're going to find out, they're going to come back, they're going to do a documentary, and they're going to tell you what's down there. The third person, okay, <laughs> going to do the documentary. But, but, but listen, sometimes they'll be saved, and sometimes they won't be saved, right? And you got to be all right with that. You know, sometimes God will teach you some things through an un unsaved vessel. See, if you know the word, though, you know where they're getting off, right? But don't not get what you need. Y'all got it? Amen. Somebody say, get what you need. And I got this in him. Please understand this. They will not be there to do the work that only you are supposed to do in order to make you a success. Y'all got it? Because some people have that mentality. They think when, when the who show up, they're supposed to do all the work you got to make you a success. And who is saying, listen, I've already done that work once. I ain't even do it no more. Right. This is how I did it. And this is what you need to do. And I'll come back and I'll check on you to see whether or not you are doing it correctly. But I'm not going to do it for you. Y'all got it? And, and you'll be surprised 
the more they see you uh, uh, invest yourself, the more they'll be willing to communicate to you. And every now and then they might put their hand in it too and help you do this or to, or to do that. You got, but you got to invest yourself in your own success. Somebody say it. I have to invest myself in my own success. That was pretty good, right? So Joshua had his father to pour into his life. He had Moses to pour into his life. And he had the Lord to pour into his life. And, of course, the Lord uh, was the most important one of the three. And he will always be the most important person uh, that we need to have to pour into our lives. You got it? Uh, you have to be careful about, and I'm closing, about success. Go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, I think in 18. Or is it 18 and 8? Let's see. And uh, because what the enemy will try to do when you become successful, I think it's 8 and 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll try to, he'll try to cause you. And I know this kind of stuff never enters your mind, you know, that when I get stable, when I become successful, that I'm going to forget about God. I'm going to forget about the things of God. And um, sometimes success can cause you to become so focused on your success because being focused is one of the principles that breeds success, right? A diligent man shall abound with blessing, the Bible says. And so what that means is that when you get after something, you, you focus in on it. you all in. You're not half in. You got it. Amen. You got a direction to your life. You won't be deterred, you know. And so, and, and you got to have that, but you have to be careful that you don't allow that to get out of control. Because you can get so focused on your success or being successful until you forget about God. And, and forgetting about God is not, I just, I just forgot about God. His importance in your life begins to, to you will begin to wane. Is that is a good way to say that? Yeah, he's not first place no more in your, in your life. You, you got and that's, that's, that's real subtle, subtle. Yeah, y'all got it. But the enemy has used that, and he continues to use that on those who are not aware of his tactics, right? Deuteronomy 8 and what? And 18. He says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, man. God knows the end from the beginning. Right? I don't care how they say, Lord, Lord we ain't going to never, and I know that's bad, we ain't going to never forget about the Lord. Oh, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Y'all got it. And people confess that. They testify that. They say all that kind of stuff. But as soon, sometimes, if they get to that place of stability and they got it clicking, they got it going on, man, they start forgetting about the law. They never denied that they were the children of God. Y'all got it. But in their actions, God said, you done forgot about me. You done forgot about me. When you were making minimum wage, I couldn't beat you to church. Now, God was first place in your, in your life. Now they want to take it up to $15 an hour. Ain't the Lord good? That ain't no money. Yeah, not, not from the perspective of what you want out of life. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be grateful, you know. But I'm just, yeah, right. That You know, $15 an hour, you, you, you know. And, and, and God said, look, I done looked down through time. And, and I decided to warn them about something that he knew they were going to do. Hmm? 
Verse 18, this is where I am. It says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he, oh, Lord. Now, remembering the Lord don't mean I remember the Lord. No, that means you get on up, you come to the house of God, you, right, you invest yourself in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, in the house of God. Uh, 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 yeah, that's, that's what he, that, that don't mean you remember the Lord, you stop paying your tithe. And you believe in God for more. Right? But he said, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is what? Lord, have mercy. That what? That giveth thee the power. You know, see, success will never be by your own might and by your own power. Right? If, if you acquire any degree of success, it's going to be because God gave you the power. That's why I say, I don't want to stand that. You know, God will give you the power to go to the job, and he won't give you power to come to church. Right, right. Yeah, you would have forgot about God. And I'm going to tell you, the way that happens, the more you put God back like that, the easier it becomes to do. The easier it becomes to do. You know, and you need to quit using me as an excuse. Pastor don't know I'm tired. You probably were tired when you went to work this morning, but you went. Mm, and worked. And God gave you the power to do that. Right? But we'll talk ourselves into, but he ain't got no more strength. God ain't got no more power left. When I clock out, the power done turned off. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Y'all, okay. Say, is he to give thee the power to get wealth, right? Yes. That he may establish his covenant, yes. Yes. which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Y'all got it? So, so a part of your wealth is to help establish God's covenant. You know, in the earth. I'm creating a, a, um, a post-cross prayer for you guys. And I'm going to put it to some music to it and you can we're going to record it and if you want it amen you can play it in your you know just to get post prayer praying in you believe thanking God for all the things he's made available for you in Christ Jesus y'all got it and at the end of that prayer as I was kind of wrapping it up the other day the Lord and I put in there about believing for all of these things that God the manifestation of all of these things that God has said he's already given up in Christ Jesus and the Holy Ghost had me to put in there uh Oh, hi, I'm Co-Pastor Ann Cosby with Right and Dividing the Word Church, and we would like to invite you to our 2017 Sister Sweet Must Stand Women's Conference, which will be held right here in the beautiful city of Orange Beach, Alabama, at the Career Resorts. So I would like to take this time to invite you to come. The dates are September 14th through the 16th, 2017. That's right, so be sure to come and join us. The ladies at Rightly are already making preparation just for you to have a wonderful time in the Lord fellowshipping with other sisters in the Lord. So stay tuned, and our announcer will give you some pics from last year. So be blessed. Ladies, it's that time again. Time for the Sisters We Must Stand Women's Conference 2017. This year's conference will be held once again at the beautiful Carib the Resort in Orange Beach, Alabama. We invite you to come join us September the 14th through the 16th at the Carib for our wonderful time in praise, worship, and fellowship. We will have five dynamic speakers that are seeking a word just for you, woman of God. So grab your family and your friends and reserve your condo now. To register for your conference seat, call 251-433-0121 or contact your rightly representative. To receive your conference discount, you must register by August 20th. Sisters, we must stand 2017. See you there.
have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. If you would like an audio or video copy of today's message, please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com. Connect with us daily on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Ustream to catch past shows, words of encouragement, special events, or join us live in the sanctuary. We're located at 760 Ermira Street in Mobile, Alabama. Our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr., you be blessed. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Bruton, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. Visit KC Photography, serving the Gulf Coast for over 16 years, capturing memories that last a lifetime. Families, children, graduates, weddings, and more. This month's portrait special, 33 photos for only $24.99. Get your pictures back same day. KC Photography, 235 South Wilson Avenue, downtown Pritchard. Open on Sundays. Call today, 251-452-5200, or book online at kcphotographyandprinting.com. Hello folks, Tupelo Ron here at 7150 Airport Boulevard, Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More, where we're having our year-end clearance sale. Right now we're having 60% off of our Sealy Postropedic bedding, 50% off of all sofa loves, 60% off of bedroom suits, and our Southern Motion sectionals as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello folks, Tupelo Ron here at Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More. We're going to do something a little different here today. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the word out on the deals that we have, the different products that we handle, the great prices. We do a lot of closeouts here. We have one of a kind and some of them we'll have them three or four deep, but we carry mattresses now that we are partnered up with a company out of Nashville called Best Mattress and More then we've got like 50 mattresses on the floor. We have great prices. I, I'm going to think that we probably got one of the largest display of mattresses in the state of Alabama. And in addition to that, one of the things we have, if you buy before 2 o'clock, you can get same-day delivery. If it's after that, you can get next-day delivery. And some more of the features that we have that in 30-second spots we never have the time to tell you is that we have free delivery here in town and we consider town like 30 miles in each direction from the store here so what that means to you is you don't have to pay 100 125 or whatever it is for any kind of deliveries it ain't free to us but it's free to you but i want to show you some of the deals we got in here come on follow me over here start with we handle beauty rest we got three different lines in here, and we picked these three on purpose. We carry the beauty rest. We carry all of theirs. We will sell a beauty rest probably 30% cheaper than anybody else in town. Now, we have our specialty mattresses that's by Sealy. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. But any of these things like the beauty rest, the uh, 
Englander Resort Collection. We're going to sell them cheaper than anybody else in town. We do it on purpose because we can do this. We're not just a mattress store. We're a furniture store also. Now, we used to be just furniture when it was Tupelo Furniture Outlet, but now we're Tupelo Furniture Best Mattress and more. We had to do that in order to get the dealership with Best Mattress. We had to give them half of our floor to display. As you can see, we've got, uh, I don't know, mattresses just displayed. So, but we also have furniture. Come on over and show you some of them. We have over here, I'm doing this for a price thing because nowadays uh, a good night's sleep is important, but everybody's concerned about price, and they should be with the economy like it is and everything. This is the Optical by Sealy. This mattress here, these on the adjustable beds, these are the all foam, memory foam, cool gel, the works. This Optical will sell in our competitor stores when it's, it's regular $15.99. This is a twin extra long, which is half of a king bed. It takes two of them to make a king like that. Twin extra long. Okay. They're going to sell for $14.99. But when they're on sale, and by the way, I've checked our competitors, they're on sale for $12.99. We sell this mattress for $5.99. Every day, every day, not a sale. We don't have no sales. It's just every day. That's the way we do it. Come on over here and show you. This is how we do it. Here's a queen, Stearns and Foster queen. We have, uh, hey, Don, excuse me, folks. Can you give me those pictures? I want, I want y'all to get this because we got plenty of time to do this. I want you to understand how we can sell them so much cheaper. Do you have those Stearns and Foster pictures? I bet I got them on my desk. Well, what it is, we have stores in Nashville, Tennessee, and we take the floor samples. And our guys will take them off the floor, put them in the plastic, put them in the truck, bring them down here. We're talking $2,200, $3,200 mattresses that we sell for $7.99, fully warranted. Now, if you don't mind, sometimes they'll have a scuff on them, a mark or something like that. But if you don't mind a little scuff or a mark, and we can save you a couple thousand dollars, and I'm not kidding you, come in and prove me wrong. Come in here. Let me get my, I'm going to show you what we got here. Stay with me. Thank you, sir. Here's some of the prices. You don't, $21.69 for Stearns and Foster. Right here. $29.99, Stearns and Foster. All right. This is what they look like. Can you see that, John? This is like what they look like when we bring them in. They're in plastic like that. We've taken them off the floor out of Nashville, showroom floor. They change the models about every, I don't know, about every two months. Here's one of the stores that they come out of there. Beautiful store, upscale. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, a trash place. It's beautiful. But they change the models, and then we get them, and we bring them in here like this. This is a nice series mattress. This mattress right here sells in the stores in Nashville for $2,200. Now, we don't have a queen. We have a king. Now, tomorrow, this could be a Stearns and Foster because this just happens to be one of them that came in. We sell it $7.99, same as a queen, $7.99. Come right back over here. This mattress is a Stearns and Foster estate. Google that when you get a chance, guys. Google that and see what Stearns and Foster has, a state mattress. This mattress will sell for anywhere, depending on if it's in one of the Macy's department stores. Let me see. Here it is, $33.69. But it's a floor sample. May have a scuff. I couldn't find any scuffs, even though I was looking for some. I was hoping that it would have one, so I'd have an excuse. But nevertheless, it's $7.99 for that mattress every day, as long as we got it. Now, when we're out of this one, we'll put another one out here. Come on over. Check this out. Another estate. Sold it today. Stearns and Foster. Probably a $3,000 mattress. And all you have to do is Google it. See what Stearns, Stearns and Foster sell for. This is the estate. It's the Scarborough Ultra Firm. $7.99 every day. Now, we also have cheaper mattresses. Come on back. This is the... Englander collection here. This is the resort collection. These are great mattresses. We have these on sale. Now, we don't, we don't have a sale, but if they're going to change out the mattresses and they change out the whole collection when they do, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. They change the colors on them here. I think sometimes what they're doing is they're trying to find a fabric that's cheaper than this fabric to run these. Because nowadays, you know, the trend is, Save money, save money, everything's cheaper, which is not a bad idea. But when they do that, 
they don't give these to us, but they discount them. So if you don't mind taking one off the floor, we can save you a fortune. We'll save you 50, 60 percent. Some of these mattresses sell for as high as $3,000, $4,000. You're going to get them for like $1,800. Still a lot of money, but it's a lot of mattress, you see. Also, if you're looking for just a cheap mattress, now we don't get any cheaper than this. This one in a queen. This is an all foam mattress in a queen. $399. We don't even want to sell a cheaper mattress than that. Now, I know you can buy them out there. As a matter of fact, some of the big box stores right here in town in Mobile, Alabama, where they have, you have to become a member to buy, and you pay your little fee, and, and then you go in and you buy. I'll tell you one of them they have. They sell a Serta bed. A lady was in here just the other day said, I could buy a Queen Serta for $369. I said, yes, you can. But you can't, and I'm going to say this for all the bedding stores in town, it ain't nothing like the one the big box sells is nothing like the bedding stores sell. They sell Serta. We, we have some Sertas that are floor samples. They have real mattresses. The ones in the big box, they buy so many, they tell Serta how many coils to put in it to dummy it down, scale it down, so you won't have it, so they can sell cheaper than the rest of us. And I don't mind saying that because I'm sick of that big box mess where everything is cheap, 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 but it's not the same thing. It's kind of like buying online. You don't know what you're getting until it gets there. Come on over and I'll show you some of the more products that we sell. All right. Half of the store is bedding, as you can see. Give them a shot of that, John. We had to do this in order to get the deals on bedding. We never had them like we have now. We've got these Stearns and Fosters, as many as, some of them, as much as $2,000 off. Now, you don't have to believe that. Come in and check us out. You will see. Now, over here, we also carry furniture. One of the, one of the lines that we carry, and what I've started doing is, we buy everything by truckloads, are either containers. So we don't have the capability to change the fabric on this sofa love right here, for instance. If you want it in a different color, we don't have it. Unless we just, it came in on that truck. Otherwise, you're going to buy this one just like it is. It'll be on the floor. It comes off the floor, same day delivery or the next day delivery, depending on whether it's 2 o'clock. I'll give you an example. Here's a sofa lub, 1549. Now it's $9.99. So I want to show you some features about this. Charles of London arm, T cushions, a little other detail here. Notice right here, don't go, you don't have to close, but anyway, under under here, this cushion is reversible, not cheap furniture, and it's not scaled down. Look at the size of it here. This is not a tiny, cheap, uh, whatever they call it, discount store furniture. This is the real deal. This is something, when you purchase it, $9.99 sofa and love, pillows come with it. And when you purchase it, it you, can, you got something to be proud of. It will last. By the way, it's got a 2.0 density foam. What that means to you as a customer, the foam in there, it has a dichron wrap, two inches around it, but the foam is hard, two inches. What we do is that we take foam, like I said, it's like ice cream, it's full of air, but they take a 2.0 density foam and they make a cushion, they bake it. Well, they can do the same cushion with a 1.0. 1.5. The difference is six months later when you got it at home, everybody has got a deal on a sofa before and you get about six months down the road, cushion flat. And that's what happens when you buy cheap furniture. This is not cheap furniture, it's just price right. Come on up here and show you some things. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. Sometimes when you don't have the cash on hand and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check, it's a no credit needed program. And we can get you, we can get you financed with that with a small, the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for the uh, customers had to come up with is about $53 to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have 24 months same as cash. We do not have 17 years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about it. The other day I seen a commercial. Or I heard it. I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a three ninety nine sofa. Take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking $400, five years, Maybe you shouldn't buy that sofa. 
You know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months, same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you on that credit deal. We are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID, and it's a done deal. You might need some income, but other than that, we can get you fixed up. All right, folks, back up here. Let's talk about sectionals. Sectionals now is a big part of our industry because people don't go as much. They're staying home. The economy's tougher. They're spending more time. They're ordering pizza in or watching TV. We have one of the largest selections of sectionals in town. Now, we don't just have sectionals. We have these and they're manufactured by Southern Motion. Southern Motion, one of the largest manufacturers in the U.S. Now, how we sell them cheaper than the big box, which ain't very many big box get the Southern Motion, but because they're uh, more expensive than junk. But nevertheless, what we take, we get all their closeouts. We use the closeout fabric, fully warranted. We use all their mechanisms, leg it and plat, and then we put these fabrics, we pick the ones we want, we save thousands of dollars. This sectional right here could very easily be $4,200. Look at it. Got a power. I'll show you right here. Reclining power. Here, here, two others over here. So you got four recliners. Console here. We sell it for $1,799, this sectional. Uh, over here, all over leather sectional. And I'm not going to get any great detail about them because they won't be here but just a few days anyway, and then we'll have some more in just like it. But nevertheless, this is one that we got at the market. It was a closeout all over genuine leather. And we don't usually deal in leather. We deal in Duralux. I'll show you what Duralux is here. Duralux is a man-made fabric. It's a polyurethane. It feels like leather, but it is not leather match or anything like this. Over here, this is the real, the cow paid the price for this one. It's the real deal, genuine leather. We won't have many of them. This one was $6,000. We sell it for $2,900. That's if you just got to have the real deal. And I don't, you know, everyone likes that now and then. Come on over into this department. Those are the motion sectionals. These are stationary sectionals. If I'm not mistaken, we have 22 sectionals on this floor at any given time. So, sofa love, sectionals, dining room, Recliners, we got the works. And if you like something a little more flashy, turn around and look at this. Let me show you. Check that out. Red, green, blue, whatever color that is. Just a little trinket there to go along. But a lot of the youngsters seem to like that. Bedroom suits. All right, we buy our bedroom suits from a company out of Dallas, Texas. It's called Elements. These bedrooms, we buy them by containers and truckloads and closeouts. Now, if it's not a container, if it's not a, we don't, we don't order just one, we have to order a truck to get a real deal. But with everything as slow as it is these days in the industry and many other industries, when you buy that many at one time, you can get a deal on them, trust me. We got this group, King Bed, Dresser Mirror, The Works, 1399, 1329, excuse me. This is real furniture. Notice the height of this furniture. We're not talking about kid furniture here. We're talking about the real deal here. Velvet lined drawers. Look here. You can open that drawer with one hand, put your furniture, your clothes in it with the other hand, and it not hang up on you. Come on around here. I want to show you something. Here's a bed here we bought. We got a I see, I don't know, I think we got 14 of these. These are Pulaski beds. They sold for $3,600. It's what this bed sold for originally. There's a closeout. Nine seventy eight is our price, as long as we got them. And I'm going back up through here. Now, real furniture. Check this. The height and the size. Antique height, velvet line, English dovetail, steel ball bearing glides. What that means to you as a customer, watch this. You can open it with one hand and shut it with one hand. So, I mean, this is real stuff. It's not, I know you can buy bedroom suits cheaper than $1,279, but you can't buy these 
You can't buy nothing like this. You can buy a press board, something to last you two years or something, but you won't get wood like we have. Come on back. We've got all different styles. I'll make sure that we have different for different age groups. If someone wants a different style, we got it. Contemporary. Again, take a look at the height of this chest. Hey, this is not children's furniture. Look at this thing. This chest must be five feet tall. See, it's the real deal. All right, let's see what the price on. Fourteen seventy nine for the complete group. Hey, by the way, speaking of complete group, you ever heard of a five piece group where it's a headboard, footboard, rails, dresser, and a mirror? A five piece group to us is the bed, dresser, mirror, chest, and a nightstand. Actually, it's a four piece group. I should come up with something else to make it five, but we don't need to because that's everything it takes. Now, here's a group like here. A little bit different, but look at the, see, even though, see how those drawers glide like that? See how easy they do? Hey, that's serious business. And, and nowadays, folks come in and they're so concerned about the price, they don't take a few moments to say, you know what? That's pretty good quality. But they'll wish they had in about six months. Look at this group here. For instance, this is a living room suit with nail heads. Now, these are individually, they have to hire somebody to put that nail in there, each one of them nail heads. That's not a strip of tin that you tack on here and tack on over there, and it falls off and rolls up six months later. Sofa and love seat on this one with the pillows, $9.99. It don't get any better than that. It's real furniture. Come on back here. We've got a recliner department right back here, but I want to show you something we got in the other day. These recliners, big man recliners. Look at this. Three position, chase recliner, and it's not a little recliner, fully warranted, 349. Now this thing will sell for $600 anywhere. 349 at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More. Got it, come on over here. We'll show you something. Our sofa sets are fully lined. See this, see this cushion? It's lined on both sides. Now, that may not mean much to you now, but it'll mean something to you in about a year or two when one side starts looking a little worn. You can just flip that cushion over and get more life out of them as opposed to a cheap product that half of the this side's covered and the other side's paper. You know what I'm talking about. Come on up. We use a company here called Fusion. They're part of the BFI, Broyhill Furniture Industries. Fusion is one of their sister companies. Broyhill, I don't even think, is in business anymore. Now, they, they went out of business, but their name will still be around. I'm sure they'll pick it up in China or something and use it. But it won't be the Broyhill that your mother and dad knew years ago. But this is Fusion. Pillows, fabric, these fabrics are $30 a yard on these pillows. This group right here, Sofa and Love, should be 16 something, 10.99 every day, every day. And if you're looking for something for maybe the first time out of the gate apartment or something, you're looking at 6.99 Sofa Love. Sofa and Love, 6.99. And don't worry about it if we have this one cuz we don't, we'll have another one like it. Another one of the fusion groups here. 10.99. Look at this, real furniture, not scaled down, big furniture. See that with the pillows. Folks, I wanted to bring you back up here and bring your attention to the quality of these sectionals. Uh, there are some different things too. We have next day delivery. I don't care what time of the day you get in here. You don't have to wait two weeks for the merchandise. If they special order it two months for the merchandise, we're going to bring it to you the next day. At if you're 30 miles in any direction from here, we go to Hurley, Mississippi at no charge, however far that is. I think it's about 30 miles. Uh, we go out here to Tillman's Corner. We go to Sarah Land. We go all of these places, no charge. All right. And I want to tell you a little bit about this. Since they come out with the Duralux, I know a lot of folks have had some real problems, including us, with what they call bonded leather. Well, what happened on bonded leather is this. They tested it. They have what's called a 30,000 rub test. It's a machine. They take that leather and they do this. 
They say 30,000 times. I don't know if they do or not. They just do it 10,000, but still a lot of times. But <clears throat> what they didn't consider is that the chemicals on, in our body when we perspire, in our hair, the clones that we wear, it separated the leather from the cloth that was bonded. So now they've come out with a thing called, some people call it Duralux, Durapella. But anyway, what it really is, it's a man-made material, like a microfiber, and it's on, put on to top of a cloth. It actually breathes. That way it doesn't peel, because that bonded leather was a nightmare, believe me. Can, I, I can imagine paying three or $4,000 for a product, three years later, it's peeling off. I mean, that's terrible. It's a terrible thing for the industry to do to us, to do to you. But they've tried to correct it, so we're past all of that. But one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention is the quick delivery, the no charge, and when you come in uh, and you have a problem, if you do have a problem and you're in one of these big chain stores, you come back in and you find your salesperson say, look, I got a problem. This arm come loose or whatever. Well, I, I can't help you. I'm a salesman. That's all I do. Well, who, who do I, I need to speak to your manager. Well, okay, yeah, we can take care of that. I'll turn that over to customer service over in Atlanta, Georgia somewhere, and they'll get back with you. But when you come in here, the salesperson will pick up the phone. They're going to call the manufacturer and say, look, we got a problem. Right arm facing is stitches come loose. I need to order that. I need to get it on order. Okay, and then as soon as it comes in, it usually takes about a week for, for the cuts to come in like that. Then we take it. We've got a guy here locally that not only works for us, works for other furniture stores. He'll come out and replace it. So you're talking to somebody that can get the job done. The only thing, problem we've had is to get the message out. That's why we're going to start doing these 30-minute commercials like this, info commercials. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Used to be Tupelo Furniture outlet, Tupelo Furniture outlet. So it's Tupelo Rhymes, Tupelo Furniture, however you want to say it. 7150 Airport Boulevard, we're handling the bedding, we're handling the furniture, and we are in a position now to make the prices better than ever. Had a lady in here today, in here today, that had been in some of the big chain stores, she said, your prices are great. She bought a bedroom suit, said, I can't believe it. I said, you can believe it. There is one catch. You got to buy the one you see, because I may not have another one like it. But we get them in all the time, because we're always doing these closeout things. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. Sometimes, when you don't have the cash on hand, and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check, it's a no credit needed program. And we can get you, we can get you financed with that with a small, the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for the customers had to come up with is about $53 to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have 24 months same as cash. We do not have 17 years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about. I, the other day I seen a commercial. Or I heard it. I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a 399 sofa. Take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking $400, five years, Maybe you shouldn't buy that sofa. You know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you on that credit deal. We are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID, and it's a done deal. You might need some income, but other than that, we can get you fixed up. Folks, I just thought of something. Let's talk about how to get you here. We're just, what, one mile east of Schillinger, about two blocks west of Cody on the right-hand side. You can't miss us. UJ Chevrolet, right up here on the left. Ford Place, right up here on the left. We're in the heart of Dixie here, Mobile, Alabama. So. 7150 Airport Boulevard. We are open from 9 in the morning till 7 at night every day except Sunday. We're closed on Sunday right now. We're trying to 
have a little more family life. We used to be open Sunday too, but that's that's too much for us. There's not that many of us here. We're keeping our overhead down. That's another thing too. One of the reasons why we can sell cheap. There's not but five of us here. Me and two others in sales, and I work every day here. And then we got two delivery guys, and we do work, and we don't mind. We it's a privilege to get to work. Or I feel like it. I don't know how they feel. I think they do. <laughs> but nevertheless, we're here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Come on in and see us. I guarantee you we will do our best to earn your business. I am not kidding you. We're going to get you the deal. We're going to get it delivered fast. And if you do have a problem, we're going to take it personal, and we're going to fix it for you at Tupelo Furniture. Best mattress and more. Got to add that in there. I forget about these mattress people, you know. They want their little click. <laughs> we need them, though. Tupelo Furniture's Best Mattress and More, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello, folks. Tupelo Ron here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More, where we're having our year-end clearance sale. Right now, we're having 60% off of our Sealy Posturepedic bedding. 50% off of all sofa loves. 60% off of bedroom suits and our southern motion sectionals as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's at Tupelo Ron's S Mattress and More, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. Hello friend, I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron. So does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652.
Well, welcome to the broadcast today. I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church, and I'm always excited to bring the message to you because I truly believe that you grow after hearing the Word of God. Today, I'm going to be talking about living the abundant life. You know, many times people ask me, how do you live this abundant life? How can I live at a place where it talks about in John 10 and 10 that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus Christ came to give life and that life more abundantly. Well, today I'm going to be talking about it must start in your heart. This is called the heart test. You know, in our lives, we will be tested different ways. You know, I went to the doctor recently, and they wanted to do a physical on me. And, of course, they did a full physical, and they checked my heart. They made sure it was pumping right, make sure I was there was no clog in my arteries or anything like that, that I was doing well. And I believe truly that the, our hearts need to be tested, not our physical heart, I'm talking about our spiritual heart. Where is our motivation coming from? And so today I'm going to be talking about the heart test. You're really going to enjoy it. And I would encourage you to get your pad, uh, of course, get your Bible out and get your pen. Follow along with me as I share the heart test. I'll be right back. Well, did you turn your Bibles over to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, we'll start there. The title of the lesson, if you're taking notes, is The Heart Test, The Heart Test. You know, the other day I went for, uh, of course, a, a, a checkup, and I was doing my yearly checkup, and, of course, they began to do some different tests on me because I'm of a certain age, and so uh, they want to do a certain test, amen. At a certain age, you get a certain age, you want to do other tests than just go in there, open your mouth, ah, uh, and all that kind of stuff. They want to do some other things. So in, in the process of that, they told me, that, of course, we want to check out your heart. We want to make sure your heart is functioning the way it needs to function. So they began to talk about different type of machines. And many of us know about the EKG machine that they hook you up to. And then they find out how the rhythm of your heart is working and things like that. But what the doctors were doing was testing how well my heart functioned and how well it was able to handle stress or any other pressure that's placed on it. Now, today we're talking about the heart test. And the heart test is really the test of honor. Let's look at Malachi chapter 3 there and then we'll get started and then hopefully by the end of the lesson you'll see where we're going with this. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Are you there class? Ready? Now read. For I am the Lord and I do not change. For I am the Lord and what? I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O son of Jacob. Now let's go and talk a, a really briefly for a moment. The book of Malachi, what we're reading out of, a lot of times when people hear the book of Malachi, they say, Oh, I know you're going to talk about tithes and offering today. Why? Because it's most it is one of the most books that people go to. Unrealizing that the book of Malachi has three different value points. Number one is family. Okay? Number two, or oh, well, faith family and finances okay those are the three areas that it takes it says it, oh there you go it's a, Malachi is a book about returning to God in our what faith family and finances all right so now that's what the book of Malachi is all about a lot of people say well that's the Old Testament and that's true but truthfully if you look at the book of Malachi the book of Malachi is nothing but 15 verses away from the New Testament Matter of fact, if you read Malachi, you'll understand that Malachi is talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Got it? Now, now, let's keep going. The reason why that's important is because a lot of times when people read the book of Malachi, they assume that because it's in Malachi and it's Old Testament, that it does not apply to us today. So let's go ahead and clear this up right now. The first thing is, tithe came before the law. Say that with me. Tithe came before the law. Tithe is in the law. And time is after the law. Now let's do it one more time. We got halfway people there. Number one, time before the law. Time is and time is after the law. Okay. So now all these areas time is. So when you hear somebody say, "Well, time is in the Old Testament," you can let them know, "No, no, no. There was tithing before the." Uh, the 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 the, um, the law there was tithing before law and then they were doing the law there was tithing in the law can I get an amen? amen amen see now so now look at this now real quickly look at this over in Malachi chapter three verse eight it says will a man rob God but yet you have robbed me but you say in what way have we robbed you in what tithe and in offering and so you hear people say well you know it's behind you know Pastor I'm just tired of people talking about you know listen for a moment now. Listen, they're fussing over, over time. Okay, so many of you have a slip of paper, right? 
Hold up your paper, everybody. Hold up in the air. Show me like you really do care. All right. Now, there'll be some people that won't participate. And I know why you won't participate. Because you don't want to tell the truth. And that's okay. People lie everywhere. That's quiet, right? That kind of in your face. And it kind of, I don't mean to harm by that. No, 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 no. I don't mean to harm. But, you know, people don't do it. Yeah. Because they don't, want, they don't want truth. So, okay, with that piece of paper, what I want you to do, I want you just to think, how many people in here get paid once a week? Okay. How many get pe people in here get paid every other week? How many people in here get paid once a month? Okay. How many people in here don't get paid at all? <laughs> now, I just saw my wife have her hand up, right? Did y'all see that? Y'all saw that, did She don't get paid at all. All of this is she don't get paid. <laughs> Come on now. You got the prize, baby. You don't need the Cracker Jack box. You got the prize in the Cracker Jack box. <laughs> Amen. Don't get paid. She get paid. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so now each one of us get paid or not get paid. Those that don't get paid, we're going to believe God that you start, you get a job and you make plenty of money. Amen. Now, uh, but, but those that get paid once a week, I want you to put down the amount of time. If you get paid every other week, I want you to put down your amount of time. If you get paid once a month, I want you to put down your time. Write it on that piece of paper. Now, be careful now because people try to look over your shoulder. So just hide it. Just kind of write it there. Now, you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to come back to me. I don't want it. I'm not interested in having it. It's not. This is only for an example that we'll be able to walk through this to together. Amen. I would like everyone to participate. If you do not participate, I understand why it's okay i can't make you do that but i want you to do that because it'll help you understand about tithing amen once you do that once you hide it and you write it down okay there you go hide it okay you've seen it now you got to be able to look at it open it up and look at it amen amen now if your husband and wife y'all are tithing together you can do that together that's all fine just but i want you to look at it okay all right now <clears throat> That, look, that, that, that amount, whether it's little, little or big, that amount, God set up tenth. Now, watch this now. God set up a tenth, a tenth, because it can be even and right for everybody. Got it? So nobody can say, well, one person pays more and one person pays less. There will be people getting more tithe than others primarily because of the income. Are y'all with me so far? So, so it will vary from each one. So now, when you say tithe, tithe, tithe is a 10% of your income. Now, anybody got any questions? Nobody have any questions. We had a lot of questions at the 8 o'clock service. You guys are a good crowd. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Is it 10% of your gross or net? That's it. That's the question. That's it. That's the one I'm waiting on. It, is it? Now, and, and, and Lady Lisa told me this when I was getting ready to do this. She already told me that. You know, that's going to be one of the questions, the other questions. She said, you, you know what you're dealing with. I see I know. And so, so but that, that's a good question. Nothing wrong with the question. That's the question we got to ask before. Um, but most of the time, people ask us, well, do you think it's gross or net? I really, I really don't have a specific thing to say gross or net. What I always say is this, which one would you like to get blessed off of? You know what I'm saying? That's all I say. I don't, because, because really, I, you know, I don't really tell, you know, people say, well, you don't, do, no, I don't, we can't sit up and say, it's a gross, it's your net. There's no way in the Bible that tells us to do that. But we can say, wherever you want to be blessed off of, you know, I chose to do it off my gross because I want to be blessed at that level. Got it. I think if that's just me now. You know, you may say, well, I want the net after I give the government theirs first. Say, I like to get mine before the government gets mine. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that is. Amen. So that, that is the answer. Anybody got any other questions about it? That's it. Okay. Now, uh, uh, tithe, once again, uh, people, you hear people say, well, tithe is in the Old Testament. We don't have to tithe no more. Now, you remember the amount that you wrote down. Look what they're arguing about. That, that, ain't no, that ain't no money, y'all. I mean, really. I mean, you say, oh, yes, it is. But really, if you really look at it and say, can this pay one of my bills? Probably. I, it can't hardly pay some of y'all's sale bill. <laughs> No, I'm talking about a real sale bill. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about that $300 sale bill. You got a hand, you got a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, on, your oh, my oh, good question. Wow, we didn't get that one. Do we, and the question was, do we tithe on our tax return? Because you've already paid it, right? You've already tithed off of it. You're just trying to be slick. That's what I always say. That's what I say. That's, that's just, just me. That's just me. Um, I don't tithe off of my uh, uh, tax return. I give off of my tax return. Amen. 
In other words, if I get a tax return in, my, it's most likely it's bigger than what my tithe would even be with my tax return because I call it unexpected income. Now, now you got me going this place and you're taking up my time, by the way. But anyway, because if you are getting a tax return, that means you gave the government too much money and I refuse to give them too much money. That's a whole different subject. See, that's a, that's a whole different subject. We're not going to talk about that. Amen. Hey, cut that part off the television. I don't want them coming out and seeing me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, I give off my tax return. I don't necessarily tithe off of it. I give because, you know, that's, that's what I do. I'm not saying that's the only way. Some people tithe off it. It's fine. But I do not let any income come into my household where I don't give honor to God. That's just me. Whether, it is, whether it's earned or whether it is a gift. Got quiet on that one. Amen. That's just me. All right. You don't have to do it. You're not going to be a bad person. You ain't going to be cursed if you don't do it. It's just better if you do it. Amen. All right. Now, look, now look at this in Malachi chapter 3 and verse, uh, verse 7. It says, Yet from the day of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, In what way? Shall we return? Underline that. What way shall we do what? Return. In what way shall we return? So the children of Israel is asking God a question. God, in what way can we return? What can get us back on track? Now, he says it in verse 7. He says that your fathers have re rebelled and not been obedient to the ordinance. The ordinance simply means, it, all, it just means ordinary behavior. Can you say that with me? ordinary behavior. In other words, God was saying, you, your tithe is just an ordinary behavior. That's what you do normally. That's just a way of life. You just, that's what you do. So it's a normal reaction, and those are the things you do. He said, but you came away from it. But at the end there, he says, in what way shall we return? Look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. It says, well, a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In what? Tithe and offer. Now, how many know that you can't pull out a, a, a you know, a gun and hold up God? Amen. Now, you know how that sounds. Amen. You're robbing your God. You can't rob him. You physically can't rob God. So, well, what is he talking about? He's talking about this. You may want to write this down. You rob God the opportunity to bless you. Amen. You rob God the opportunity to bless you. In other words, you, you, you're stopping God from really doing what he's doing. He wants to bless you, but you're, you're causing his hands to be tied, and he, cannot, and he cannot do it because God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he must repent. If he said it in his word, he can't go back on his word. He's got to stand on his word. Well, I know we're just getting started in a familiar verse right out of Malachi chapter 3. How many times have you heard that verse preached? How many times have you heard it ministered? Well, today we're learning a little bit more about the meaning of it and the importance of Malachi chapter 3 as we tithe, as we give unto God. It is a powerful scripture that helps us and really catapult us into the next level of abundance. It is an awesome thing. I want you to get this CD today. If you would, call the number on the screen right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. They will send you out this CD absolutely free. Now, this is only available to those that are viewing the broadcast or listening to the broadcast. It is available to you right now. Call the number on the screen right now, and you will be able to get this CD. It will change your life. I'm telling you, it will change your life. So call right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. Now let's go back into the message already in progress, and I'll be right back. Now then it says this in verse 9, and this is the part that really makes people angry. I don't know why. It says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. And then that's what people get back under that law. They thought, well, that's in the Old Testament, Pastor. That's the law. Because Jesus came in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, and he redeemed us from the curse. Yes, Jesus Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. You're absolutely right. But it's talking about salvation. It's talking about Jesus Christ came, and now we don't have to be under the condemnation and the conviction of the laws that were made outside of his word. Okay, I see I still got a problem. Okay, uh, can I get your wallet? All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Ah, da, 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 da. Hey, I'm under grace. Thou shalt not steal is under the law. Wait a 
wait a minute, he can get, give me a wallet with no money in it. So now, that's silly, isn't it? It's silly that you can steal in the New, in the New Testament and not be under the consequences of stealing. How many know if you steal, you got to play the consequences of stealing? I can't say, oh, I'm under grace, oh, I'm under grace. No, you can't say that. So why do we do it with tithe? Why we do it with tithe is primarily because we're having an issue with that. We have an issue with giving to God what belongs to him. Amen. Can't believe it. Empty. Thank you, sir. Amen. So now the Old Testament, once again, law, I mean the uh, tithe is before the law. Tithe is and that's what, so tithe had nothing, law had nothing to do with tithing. Tithing was a heart thing. God was dealing with the heart. Let's keep digging in this because I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Look over here in verse 10. It says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there be food in my house and try me now in this. Do what? Try me. Some of you got tests. Who got King James? Some, King James got proved, right? Prove me. Glory to God. And this is what I used to say, is that what God does is, God is putting a line in the sand. And he said, I double dog dare you cross it. He said, don't know me, young folk don't know about that. They don't know about that. I double dog dare you to cross it. God, God, cross, cross. he said, try me. Prove me. And see, won't I bless you. In other words, he said, not only this is a test for you, but this is a test for me. And see, and then when you understand that, you begin to step into a whole different area of blessing. What, what he says here, when he says, he says, try me in this, says the Lord, if I would not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such blessings that you will not have room enough to receive. Now, the problem about that, that people have is that they believe that when they give their tithe, that automatically God's going to drop a Mercedes Benz out the sky, hit the ground, and then you're going to jump in and drive it. Now, that sounds good. But if you ever stop by the police officer, you got to give them your registration and proof of ownership. And then he asks you, where is the proof that you have registration and ownership? And then you say, well, I got this from God. They say, okay, please get out the car now. Put your hand behind your head. Walk back slowly now. Walk back slowly. Because you're going to jail. Right? Because we know... And sometimes that's how we believe God operates. God does not operate that way. He explains how he operates. He says that men shall give, Luke 6, 38, that men shall give out of their bosom unto you. So God's going to use people here on the earth to bless you. Amen. And that's okay, amen? But when he talks about open the windows of heaven, he's talking about this, people. He's talking about opportunities, God creative ideas. Yes. He's talking about things that you think about. How many have ever got thoughts in your mind that just overflood you? You know, you get one idea, and then tomorrow you have another idea. The next day you have another idea, and you're like, oh, I can't do the first idea until I get the second idea. How many have ever did that? Now, that's over. That's over right there. I mean, that's, you just got too much. You can't even handle it. But how many know if you can handle a lot of money? Even if you don't have enough in your bank account, you can, you can send it overseas. You, you, man, you much. Come on. I mean, you won't run out of places to put money. Now, you may want to put them over your cousin's house, but you, got, you won't run out of place. You won't run out of place to put no money, though. You won't run out of place. <laughs> you come over to me and lady Lisa's house. Hey, hey, y'all put this money. Is it, is it legal? Yeah, okay, come on, bring it over there. Amen. But we can buy, you can hide it up on our mattresses. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, but, so there's no, you know, that's, that, he's not talking about money, because if we're talking about money, there's, there's, you will always have a place to put money, but he's talking about creative ideas. He's talking about being creative. He's talking about you, all those things that's coming to your thought on how to bring wealth in your household, how to bless your family, how to begin to do better, how to get that new job, how to begin to do. He's talking about all those creativities. And he says, hey, you will have so much that you will not even have room enough to receive it. Isn't that awesome? Amen. But number 11 says, and I will rebuke the devour for your sake so that you will, you will, he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the, of your fruit fall I mean, excuse me, fruit for you in, fail for you in the field. I thought, yeah, there it is. I'm reading it different. The vine failed to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord host. Now, let's look at verse 11. We'll stay on verse 11 for just a few moments. And I want to give me two people. Not, I don't need the three yet. I just need two people for this example. Just two folks. Okay. Man, you're going to be my example all day. Amen. Good. 
Thank you, sir. Come on, Pastor. Amen. So now, uh, Pastor, uh, you're going to be saved. Oh, thanks, okay, you saved. You saved, man. Uh, Deacon Troy, you ain't going to be saved. You're not a deacon no more. <laughs> All right, now, if Troy gets $500 and Pastor uh, Hopper gets $500, okay, how much money do they have each? Okay, how much money can, of, of stuff can he buy? How much stuff can he buy? But he ain't saved. He, he ain't saved, so he still can buy $500? But he don't shout. He ain't a pastor. He don't, he don't even speak in tongues. He don't have a hold of goals. Now, y'all know you see me. But his 500 is 500, right? This is what it is. Is that God says that his 500 can only get him $500 worth. But his 500, because he tithe, has been blessed. Why? Because the devour can come and steal and take his stuff. So even though he has the same amount, his doesn't go the same distance. Right? Because he gets interruptions. With his money, that's orchestrated by the devil. You know how your tire go out when you don't need it to go out? You know, you're tired. You're tired on your car. You know one tire bus can, can make up a whole check. I mean, I'm talking to the wrong people. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, but y I know some folks in here know what I'm talking about. One blowout tire can mess up that check that week. Because you got to get that tire. And if you get that tire... Something ain't getting paid. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all used to know, you know, but y'all don't know now. We don't know about that now, Pastor. But anyway, so, 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 so what's the difference between these two is, is that God gives them a promise. The promise is found in Malachi chapter 3, verse 11. Let's look what he says. Are you there? I told him to keep that up there, didn't I? All right. Think I'm going to have to get the stinty cord. <laughs> Bible man. Malachi 3 and 11, 3 and 11, Malachi, 3 and 11, 3 and 11. I don't think he heard that, praise God, amen. I didn't think y'all heard that. I got to cut my mic off when I start thinking in my inside voice. Malachi chapter 3, verse 11, all right? Now watch this now, the escalations. Malachi chapter 3, verse 11, thank you, sir. All right, keep that right there, all right? And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not... Destroy the fruit of your ground. So well, time goes by so fast when you get in the message, but you don't have to miss it. You can get the entire message today. All you have to do is call the number on the screen right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. They will send you out this CD absolutely free. Now, I must tell you, this will not be available on our website. You can only get it by calling the number on the screen. And also, too, you cannot get it at our bookstore for free. You have to call, you have to call the number on the screen right now. They're waiting on your phone call. Go ahead and do that right now. Now, if you're not born again, if Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, if you say, Pastor, I need a relationship with God, and you're starting off in the right spot. You're starting off in the right place. You know, in order to start this abundant life and living this abundant life, it is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing him as your Lord and Savior can change and transform your life. Can I pray for you right now to receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you say this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. I renounce them all. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as Lord and Savior of my life. Well, if you said that prayer a minute with your whole heart, call us here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. We have some great things for you. We're going to give you a disciple manual. I'm going to send you also to a CD that's called Living in Your Righteousness. And also, too, I'm going to put in there a daily bread that shows you a daily confession. And also, to a daily, every day you have a testimony of God's grace and God's mercy. We'll send that out to you absolutely free. Now, the second thing you need to do for me is get in a Bible teaching church, somewhere where you're going to learn the 
the word of God and you're going to grow in the word of God. Now, if you're looking for a, a, a Bible teaching church, you may say, I'm looking for one. I don't know where one is in my area. If you desire to, you can call the number on the screen or you can go to our website. If you go to our website, go to the comment section and put into the comment section, looking for a church and tell us what state you're in, where's your location. Uh, and then we'll be able to tell you some cited churches right around your area that's teaching the word of God. And you can go and check them out. And uh, we're going to be praying for you and believing God for supernatural abundance to happen in your life that you flow as God desires you to flow. I'm excited today that you joined us. And I don't take it for granted that you tuned in today. So I want to tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of the program today. Well, I'll be back next time right here. In Jesus name. God bless you. Getting educated by those that my grandmother helped build with her leaflet offering six dollars. One was two seventy five. I'm looking at these things that grandmama gave and I found out why God did what he did in our lives. See, because this is not about just you tithing. This is about setting your family free. This is about breaking the curse off of your family. This is about breaking poverty. This is talking about every area of your life. This is talking about quit being at a place of lack where you can live on top of the world. Why? Because Jesus Christ has died for you in order that you'll be able to take part of this covenant blessing. The heart test. Call now for a free CD of today's broadcast. Dial one 910 life That's one 910 Dr. Easley would like you to have this free CD. We are waiting for your call. Visit our website at newlifegcsc.org where you'll find more series by Dr. Easley. We would like to invite you to connect with Dr. Easley on Twitter at Dr. Dexter Easley. On Facebook, facebook.com, NLCFGCSC. On YouTube, Dexter Easley Ministry, and visit our website at newlifegcsc.org. Stay connected. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Now here we're generations later still dealing with the same spirits that they dealt with in times of slavery. Amen. So most of the demons that we deal with in our community and even in our society are still spirits that have attached themselves to us and have us still thinking like we slaves yeah. instead of free men. Yeah. Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. <laughs>
in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, very interesting scripture. You, you sometimes in your own time, private, quiet time, you need to get it, read that whole section. Because it, it talks about the heart of the Father. Everybody say, God is our Father. Come on, one more time. God is our Father. And a Father only has the best interest for his children at heart. One more time. The Father only has the best interest for his children at heart. All right, now let's read uh, together what I say, verses 15 through 20. Ready, read. For though we have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have... Wherefore I beseech you, come on, read. My beloved son, and faithful in the Lord. Hmm. Amen. We're going to finish it. What will ye? Shall with a rod or in love or in the spirit of meekness? Well, see what was going on. You know, sometimes people get to rebelling. And Paul had heard some things they probably had been saying out there. And Paul said, I ain't scared of none of y'all. And uh, I'm going to be on the way to see you. <laughs> and uh, we'll discuss those things that you want to talk about when I get with you face to face. Amen. But prior to that, this scripture begins to deal with the heart of the Father. Fight, write these six things down, then we're going to try to review them according to scripture. First of all, there's a difference between the anointing of an instructor and the anointing of a father. First of all, there is a difference between the anointing of an instructor and uh, of the father. It's a difference. Number two, everyone does not have a father's heart. Everyone does not have a father's heart. Number three, recognize that the father or a father gives birth to things. I like to say it like this, real men make things happen. Fathers give birth to things. Number four, recognize that a father leads by example. A father leads by example. Number five, the father will assign our caregivers that keep you in remembrance of your inheritance. The Father assigns caregivers that will keep you in remembrance of your inheritance. Then number six, fathers teach us how to follow God. Amen. See, we have to remember one thing about it. We serve the God of Abraham. Come on, y'all help me finish it. And who? So he was the God of who? Our fathers. So the Bible starts talking about he's the God of our fathers. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. See, so if, you, if you, you've you been raised, uh, and, 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 and it's, a, it's somewhat of a sad thing in times that not every father is at home. So when I get on my first point here, I just want to do it like this. It says there's a difference between the anointing of an instructor and, and, and a father. Well, number one, he says, look at verse 15. He says, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet ye have not many fathers. For in Jesus... 
Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So we understand, first of all, that there's a difference between an, an instructor's anointing and a father's anointing. Amen. Well, in, in our society, it's gotten so broken down, and, and, and I'm going to just deal with it. Just how One day I was praying and talking to God uh, about some things and, and dealing with the family. And God told me like this. He said, a lot of people, because of absentee fathers, they have been leaning to the elder brother's anointing. Now, y'all stay with me. What I mean by that, if you lived in a household and your father was gone and you had other siblings, generally the oldest brother became more of your leader, your guide, your teacher. Sometimes it wasn't no daddy that taught you how to tie your shoes. It was your big brother. Sometimes it wasn't your daddy that taught you how to ride a bicycle. Big brother, uncle. Now, the only difference between that is your sibling really does not know too much more than you. Amen. That's right. So what we have been doing when we receive from that, even though it's kept us stable, probably kept us in some good situations, but we just been receiving, how can I say this, horizontally and not vertically. Jesus. If I got time, go to Psalm 133. See, an anointing flows down. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't flow vertically. I mean horizontally. It flows down. So just because I taught you how to ride your bike, tie your shoes, maybe even tie your tie. Sometimes Big Brother had to plat out. And one of my good friends got a bunch of sisters. And they were younger than him. The daddy died when they were young. Man, he know how to do how just as good as some of the sisters. Amen. Do twists, put borets on them. He know the difference between a plait and a braid. Come on up Amen. in here. Amen. But now he's real masculine. But because their father passed, and he was the oldest sibling, he fell in the place of what would resemble a father. But he still wasn't a father. He was just my big brother. And so if there was no father there, watch me now, I'm teaching you something, to impart to him on fatherhood, manhood, and how to really be a man. I mean, you know, a lot of his things are misconceived also. Well, y'all understand what I'm saying? So a, a elder brother, a sister's anointing is more like a teacher, an instructor. Write this down. See, fathers protect, they cover, they provide. Uh-huh. And at times they give instructions, but greater than that, they give you an impartation. Your father, see a lot of times we don't know it because we come from a matriarchal society, and I'm, I'm going further than I want to go today, because of the spirit of slavery, it left us in this place. How many of y'all watch the new roots? Or the old roots? Well, let me, let me give you, tell you what happened during slavery. First, with, before we came from Africa, and I can only say we because I'm black. We were strong family ties. The father was looked at as a prince or a king. That's why they say the man is a king of his castle because he was the head of his family. So when they enslaved us, put us in chains, and I say this is carried over from the spirit of slavery, simply because once we got free, our minds were not free. And we continued to carry on like slaves. So instead of us learning how to really be committed to one family, because I was, if I was a big buck, strong, you know, now's are going to use me to breed to make other big, strong bucks to work in the field. Ain't nobody saying that. So what happened? He opened up a gateway in the spirit for a whole mongling spirit to rest on me. And instead of me being a father, because I told you a father provides, protects, covers, uh, uh, sometimes gives instruction, but more than that, he gives you an impartation. And he lets you know who you are. Because of that, now we got children everywhere. And we, because of the spirit of slavery, because you don't, you, you never got to raise your family. That's right, that's right. Because if you watch the movie Roots, or uh, uh, what's that other one that was out before Roots that was on TV? The Underground, and, but this is another movie. Uh, where, <coughs> where the man, well, yeah, yeah, I just saw it. I can't think of the name of why well, I like the movie too. You know, some folks don't like it. Somebody help me. 12 years of slave. Yeah. Hey, 
Do y'all remember in 12 years of slave how even the little boys yeah. were sold off? Yeah. So how about it? If, if I had a good master and he still kept me around the family, my sons never get to bond with me because by the time they get old enough and strong enough to work in the field, if master needed a little extra money, he sold you off. He sold my daughters. He sold my children. So what happens to me? Psychologically speaking, I never get attached to nothing. Psychologically speaking, I then start being afraid to attach myself. Now here we're generations later still dealing with the same spirits that they dealt with in times of slavery. Amen. So most of the demons that we deal with in our community and even in our society are still spirits that have attached themselves to us and have us still thinking like we slaves instead of free men. I told y'all to go somewhere. I said, look at somebody said it all flows down. Psalm 133, watch this. Ready? Read it. Everybody not reading. Faith comes out. Come on. Faith comes out. Come on, faith comes out. All right, now get on your page, get your book out. Because see, I don't want you to leave here saying the preacher said, I want you to know what the Bible says. Amen. So you can begin to understand the difference between my big brother ministering to me and when my father speaks to me. Amen. See, because if I get attached to the wrong spirit or the wrong individual, when you get this wrong with dad, I'm going to get this wrong with dad. See, when you raise in a family, <laughs> You know when the belt come out. If it wasn't time for you to get no whooping, the best thing for you to do is get somewhere and get quiet and get out the way because you might catch some friendly fire. Ain't nobody up in here but me. They go to whooping everybody. Well, I won't just whoop you two. Just <laughs> Doc said he know about that. Belt go to hit everybody. You get on somewhere, get out the way. I remember, I, you know, I didn't have a bunch of siblings, y'all know that. But I have cousins, and a lot of times I'd be left in family situation with my paper on my mother trusted, and they would tie behind. And, 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 you know, I always personally, because I ain't like whoopings, I always had personal lines of demarcation. Like where the rest of them might go on past a certain line. I'm stopping right here. Now, my, now, I ain't gonna lie to you. My feet might be right on the edge with them. I might even be halfway across the line. But I ain't come all the way across the line. So when they got ready to start swagging that belt, I really wasn't qualified to get in on that, if you understand what I'm saying. And so when that was happening, I called home. Me and a couple of my cousins, my cousin ran, and we called and said, hey, I'm ready to come home. Because Uncle LK never finna put it down up in here. Well, y'all understand what I'm saying? See, so, so, so you have to understand then that a father desires to cover. And he has to give you room to grow. But you can't get confused with your siblings over your parents. Many of y'all, my daughters in here, women in here, you've been left in the house in charge. And when mom and daddy would leave you in charge, some of them in the house say, you ain't none of my mama. Yeah. Or if it was the big brother that was in charge, you ain't none of my daddy. Ain't nobody going to help me out today, but it's all right. But mama left you in charge. And so because now my dad might have been in prison, he might have had four or five different families, he never spent the proper time with me, I didn't get to really know him, he never really covered me, ain't nobody going to help me, but I'm going to teach this text in the house. Guess what happens to me? Then I really don't even know how to relate to a man. That's right. Work, dog. That's right. Not one telling me what to do. That's right. That's right. Amen. See, because my brother may tell me what to do, and I can defy him. But if my daddy tells me what to do, I can't defy him. I shouldn't do Because if I'm willing and obedient, I'm going to eat the good of the land. See, me learning how to walk in obedience, it blesses me. So when the spirit of rebellion comes in on a young fellow, a young woman, it's because the devil is trying to push you out of purpose. And nobody in the world is really your friend. 
Anyone that tries to take you away from God is of the devil. Anyone that points you to God, God sent them in your life. See, sometimes my brother, he'll compromise with me. See, we develop all these different fellowships so we have points of accountability as we get older. Ain't nobody here but me. So if I get off and goofy, I got some folk I really trust that will tell me enough of the truth to know, no, you can't do that, Doc, you're wrong. But when I get involved, sometimes my brother, he might compromise with me if he don't have the right bar standing himself. He'll help me figure out a way to get my sin done instead of helping me figure out a way to get out of sin. See, because when I get involved in it, see, I, I, a long time ago, old preacher told me sin is like a snowball falling off a mountain. It starts real small. But as it rolls down the mountain, it progressively picks up more snow. So what I thought wasn't damaging, at the top, by the time it hits the end and explodes, it messes up everything it hits. So I don't need nobody that's going to always agree with me when I'm wrong. I, yeah, you might tell me, yeah, that sounds good, but you're still wrong. Those are the type of people you need to surround yourself with. Or else you'll get at ease in Zion and think you all right when you're all wrong. You know, the Bible talks about being turned over to a reprobate mind. Now, that's the brother or the sister. That's carnal, a carnal believer. You know, the Bible talks about three times believer. I'm trying to get through. Y'all need to let me get through. You got the one that's spiritual. Then you got the other one that's natural. Say the natural man, he receives not the things of the spirit. They are foolishness unto him. Then there is the carnal man. The carnal man is when I go to church. I feel like I'm all right after Sunday Bible study. But I'm really not, really, really, really not trying to walk this thing fully out. Now, when I'm a carnal, according to the word of God, he says, I put myself at enmity with God. Now why do I want to fight my daddy when he's trying to bless me? He says if I'm willing and obedient I'm going to eat the good of the land. Am I working up in here this morning? Come on say the oil flows down and say if I'm going to get it right Wow, wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time, on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Brooklyn, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here's the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store going to the category titled new and clicking on life television network you can also tune in to life radio network by going to the website www.tunein.com going to the search bar typing in life radio network and there you will find our station 
For those of you who are in Chickasaw or the surrounding areas, you can tune in to us on 87.9 FM. You can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens as iron, so does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need, I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, you may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call him. All you got to do is pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I would confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom, or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God, and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you, and keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. 
And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, Located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. This week on the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Now, when is favor necessary? See, because some of y'all shouting and you don't even need favor. Because favor is necessary for, you know, certain things. Now, when is, when is favor necessary? Favor is necessary when you have a vision that requires the finger of God to manifest it. Now, let me ask you a question today. Do you have a vision in here? when it's favor necessary it's necessary when you have an assignment that exceeds your abilities when it's favor necessary it is necessary when you face an enemy a problem that is beyond your stature some of y'all whining about the enemies in your life but sometimes you have a lot of the enemies because you have a lot of favor do Enemies don't follow people who don't have favor on them. If you have enemies, it's a sign that you got favor. Prepare your hearts to experience a life-changing anointing. Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. pastors a ministry that reaches out to those who are bound and ministers healing and deliverance. His dynamic ministry touches the lives of people throughout the nation and international continents. God has placed a sure word of prophecy in his mouth. Welcome to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Let's join the prophet. Thank God. Amen. And then I have my doctor, Dr. Robert Charles Blakes, Jr. And all I need you to do is just pray a little bit, pray for him. I declare he's going to bless you this morning. Yeah, it's been a while since he's been here. And this morning, I want you to hear Dr. Blaze. You're going to bring it to the... Amen. Good to be home this morning. I push... Take your seats. I, I, I made a point to get home today. I, um, I just left East New Orleans in our 7 o'clock service there, and I said, I got to go. I got to get, get uptown. 
I want to um, I want to bring your attention to the Word of God. Um, say this with me: favor. Touch that person next to you. Tell them, I got favor on me. Hmm. I'm just getting some things organized here. Touch that neighbor again. Tell them, favor is on my life. You know when you get when you get favor on you, uh, anything is subject to happen. And uh, that's what I want to deal with today. <clears throat> I want to talk about living in the favor zone. You know, zone. When you start thinking about zones. Um, a zone is a specific or particular region or place, neighborhood, where something specific happens. Uh, it's a place where, where certain things go on and certain people reside. Um, even when you think about, you know, in New Orleans we love football. When you think about football, uh, there's such a thing as the red zone. And you love to see your team get down in the red zone because when they get in the red zone, it means that any moment the score can change. One play. You, you can be on the bottom this second and in one play, one move, you can be on top. You know, the last Super Bowl we had, we, we thought that... Uh, one team had it won, but then the other team messed around and got down in the zone. And in the last seconds of the game, they won the game because they had gotten into the zone. Well, there's a thing called the favor zone. And uh, the favor zone is, is a spiritual place where the child of God can step into and change his or her life forever and that's what I come to tell you today you you may not realize that you may be looking at the circumstances surrounding you but you you are in the favor zone yeah you're in the favor zone I was sitting down with a young man uh, when was it Friday Thursday in Houston and he, I said, how are you doing? He said, Pastor, I'm having the best year of my life. He said, my business is up 26%. I said, you mean to tell me in economic times like this? He said, Pastor, I can't understand it. He says, but all I know one thing is I, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> now, how in the world you get your business up 26% in an economic climate like this Touch your neighbor, tell him the boy got favor on him. And in Psalm 102.13, he says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, type of the body of Christ, for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time is come. Touch your neighbor, tell him my time has arrived. Now, now when you look at, when you look at, <laughs> y'all gonna make me jump off this stage? Yeah. I see why I was running up here. Hallelujah. When you look at the background of that text, the people of God were, you know, going through great struggles and the psalmist declares even in the midst of these struggles that the set time of favor had arrived. And uh, there are seasons in our lives when, when it looks like Everything that can go wrong is going wrong and and it is in these seasons when things are their darkest that God stands up 
and God establishes a time in the life of a righteous man to step into that individual's life and favor him in spite of circumstances or conditions. And see, this is why the Word of God encourages us to hold on through difficult times. You know, I don't care how rough it gets. Stop all this whining and crying and complaining and buckle your faith shoes up and, you know, clamp yourself down and hold on because whenever you have a struggle, you got to understand God has a time for you to come out of it. And when you come out of it, you will always come out like Job came out with twice as much as you... What the devil thought he took for it from you, he's going to have to return with interest. I'm preaching to somebody up in here. Galatians 6, 9 says, don't be weary and well doing for in due season. You're going to reap if you faint not. There's a set time. So there's always a greater season of favor following every testing and every tribulation but you can miss it if you give up now now what is what is favor in the Old Testament uh, it, it, it you know few meanings one of the meanings of the word as it's used in the Old Testament is graciousness or or subjective kindness uh, in other words favors God's kindness bestowed on one simply because God chooses that individual over another. In other words, you know, it's God's prerogative. God can come up in here today and say, well, you know, I choose him and I'm going to favor him. And he may say, well, why, why are you favoring him and you're not favoring me? And God's response would be, it's my prerogative. I can do what I want to do. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Don't make me go back on you now. You know, it's when, it's when God gets, uh, he becomes biased regarding a, a particular child and God makes the game one-sided to the favor of that individual. Yeah, and look, look what the word says in Exodus 30. Because we see it, we see it clearly here, how the favor of God, just, you know, God just says, I choose to favor you and nobody can do nothing about it. In Exodus 3, 20 through 22, listen to what God says to the children of Israel, to Moses. He says, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I would do in the midst thereof. And after that, Pharaoh will let you go. Watch 21. And I will give this people, these slaves favor in the sight of the Egyptians the slave masters and it shall come to pass that when you go you shall not go empty you're not going to leave out broke but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house Jews of silver and Jews of gold and raiment and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and you shall spoil the Egyptians you're going to take their wealth out with you so the word used for favor here means a biased or preferred kindness. God made the slave masters favor the slaves to the point that they gave them their wealth. Now another meaning of the word favor, it means to bend or stoop in kindness to an inferior. Favor is God, in other words, coming down and doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. Favor is divine intervention into human affairs. And sometimes men trying to explain, well, how did you, you know, they want you to write it on paper. Well, how did you do this? And what was the plan for that? And, you know, sometimes folks scratching their heads saying, well, I can't really give it to you because I don't know really how it happened. All I know is that, you know, I said I, I needed it. And, and next thing I know, I'm sitting in the middle of it. The reason you can't explain it is because God is the one that came down and what? Did it. Pull on that neighbor's hand and tell him I'm waiting on God to come and do some things. 
in Psalm 75, in Psalm 75, 4 through 7, he says, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Don't get beside yourself. Lift not, lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. Don't get arrogant and proud. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and he sets up another. Now, now so the message of, of the text basically states don't get beside yourself. Don't get high minded because ultimately God's going to do what he wants to do. He will promote and set up those he prefers. And, and the, the term promotion here uh, means to, to be high, to rise or to raise. Literally, it means to bring up, to heave up. Uh, to, to lift up, to set up. And in, in other words, God takes and he, he lifts one, he throws one to where he desires him to be in life. See, when, when favor gets on your life, you got, to, you got to stay buckled in. It's like a roller coaster ride because any sudden you can be jerked from the bottom to the top. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell them, stay buckled up now, stay buckled up. Now, when is favor necessary? See, because some of y'all shouting and you don't even need favor. Because favor is necessary for, you know, certain things. Now, when is, when is favor necessary? Favor is necessary when you have a vision that requires the finger of God to manifest it. Now, let me ask you a question today. Do you have a vision in here? When is favor necessary? It's necessary when you have an assignment that exceeds your abilities when is favor necessary it is necessary when you face an enemy a problem that is beyond your stature some of y'all whining about the enemies in your life but sometimes you have a lot of the enemies because you have a lot of favor due Enemies don't follow people who don't have favor on them. If you have enemies, it's a sign that you got favor. So, so a person needs favor primarily for these three things. Now, to bring a vision to pass, fulfill an assignment, overcome an enemy. In other words, a person that is not doing anything, not going anywhere, has no need for favor. Now, now, the two necessary kinds of favor. We need favor with God, and we need favor with man. And what happens is that many people many times miss their, miss their full potential in life because they, watch this, disregard the favor of man. Some of you all in here today, you know, you have a poor attitude with people around your job. You're the worst neighbor in the neighborhood. Well, let me, let me bring it where you can reach it. Some of y'all got the, the, the worst attitude in the whole congregation this morning. You don't speak to nobody but bishop and first lady. And then you're wondering why certain things don't show up in your life. It's because God has designed a system that whatever he's going to send to you, he's going to get it to you through somebody. But when people don't like you, it's hard for them to release into your life. The Bible says of Jesus in Luke 2.52 And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature And in favor with God and man God uses men to transfer the blessing to you And when you have a personality that, that, that disrespects and ignores people You often cancel the transaction The transfer, the manifestation of God's blessing on your life God can move somebody this morning to do exactly what you need done. But if you have an attitude that turns people off, you're often working against the favor of God. Now how 
do we step into favor? Three things I want to share and I'm sitting down. I got 25 minutes. I don't plan on using all of that. Number one, how do you step into favor, Pastor? Number one, favor starts where wisdom is sought. If you want to step into favor, a season of great favor, develop a mind to pursue wisdom in your life. God's favor is such a benefit that it cannot be trusted in the hands of a fool. The greater your wisdom, the greater your capacity for favor. I was, I was talking to uh, one of my sons. He gifted, very gifted, extremely gifted. And uh, I said, I've been talking to him for about the last six months. I said, when you, when you, are you going to school? When are you going to school? He just bouncing around, doing nothing, working all these little odd jobs. And young man, no family, no children. Don't want to go to school. And so, you know, I asked him yesterday, I guess I said, now, are you, do you plan on, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do? You just go, you plan on just riding around, working all these little odd jobs, living like a little hobo, making a little few dollars here, a few, few dollars there. How are you going to increase yourself? I said, I'm asking you to go to school because when you go to school, son, it's going to expand your ability to learn and to grasp. And when God pours onto your life all that he wants to pour onto your life, it means that you will have a capacity to manage it. Yeah, you ain't got nothing going on to hinder you and you won't get, you don't want an education, but you know some people just block minded. But if you want, if you want favor on your life, you got to first get wisdom. Now watch this, watch this. Even though I mentioned school, you got to understand, wisdom doesn't come by way of the blackboard. That's just a form of earthly wisdom. It's a start though. The Bible says if you want wisdom, you ought to pray for it. And if you pray for it, God will liberally give it to you. Watch this story. Two young, two young ladies both went into business. One graduated from an esteemed institution. She had an MBA. Another young lady didn't graduate, but she had a few, few semesters of college, but she felt like the Lord was leading her into business. The young lady with the MBA, she put all of her books out and had all of her, you know, know-how and all of her intellect there on the table, and she was putting it together like they taught in the classroom. The other young lady said, well, I ain't learned all that, so I can't pull all that out. But one thing I can do is I can go around this community and I can talk to people who've been in business for years. And I can learn from their experiences. And so she went around, she talked to all the older, you know, seasoned business people. And they sat her in the office and they talked to her for hours upon hours upon hours. So finally they both decided to open the, their businesses. They launched around the same time. The one with the MBA, three years later, she was still struggling and just about to break even. Three years later, the young lady who didn't have all of the education but went and sat down and learned from those who had done that and had been there, six months after opening her business, she had to expand. Because a business was booming just that much. When you seek wisdom, shake your neighbor's hand and tell them favor will follow. You know, when you look at, when you look at, when you look at King Solomon, God promised that he would favor Solomon like no other king because Solomon asked for wisdom first. And because he asked for wisdom, he stepped into the favor zone by recognizing wisdom in 2 Chronicles 1 and 10. Look what Solomon says. He says, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? 
And look what God says to him in verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. God says, I'm going to give you what you asked for, and I'm going to give you more beside. It's because you asked for wisdom, now you got favor. Somebody wave that right hand and say, Lord, give me wisdom today. So favor starts with wisdom, where wisdom is sought. Secondly, favor comes with connection. Favor comes with connection. To step into the favor zone, you must identify rather your God-ordained relationships. Because frankly, some of you in here today are hindering the flow of favor on your lives because of who you're hung out or who you're connected to. Some of you all have the wrong people in your life. You cannot be tied down to curse people and think you're going to walk in the blessing. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Help me preach this here this morning. That's the problem I have with young Christian women, you know. It's a strange thing how Christian women, your discernment works. As long as you know you're up in the house of God, your discernment works with the members in the church, your discernment works, your discernment work on the job, your discernment works with your family. But Lord, don't let a man that look halfway the way you want him to look. And smell the way you want them to smell come up. All your discernment goes blind. This joker got two horns sticking out his head, a tail hanging out his back coat, and a pitchfork, and you can't see this as a devil. But his horns look so good, Reb. Hallelujah. I know I'm preaching up in here. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell them you got to be connected to bless people. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 20, he that walks with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You are going to reap the fruit of the company you hang out with. And every wise person takes inventory of the state of his life, her life, after every connection you make. If your life goes in a downward direction after developing certain relationships, touch your neighbor, tell them that's a sign. You mean tell me after I connected with you, I can't pay my bills? I got all these past due notices? I'm stressed out and that ain't happened to you showing up in my life I don't care how much I might think I love you you got to go Robert C. Blake Senior Prayer Center God's healing place for those who are ready to give up Experience spirit-filled and anointed prayer partners as they minister biblical principles from God's Word. Call today. Prayer partners are available now. 504-569-8205 or log on to www.prophetblakes.com to submit your prayer request. Remember, your breakthrough is a phone call away. Become a covenant partner with Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. Tap into the prophetic anointing upon his life by sowing a monthly seed of $25 or more. All faithful partners will receive a monthly special moments message prepared by Prophet Blake's. Also enjoy your personalized frame photo of the Prophet interceding for his faithful partners in ministry. Thank you for your sowing into the Prophet's life through your love and faithful support. The vision is unfolding as God uses Prophet Blake's to minister healing and deliverance to the nations. 
Today's broadcast is available on CD or DVD. Order your copy today. Remember to ask about the Prophet's new catalog or log on to ProphetBlakes.com. Thank you for your love and support to the ministry. Thank you for tuning in to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Robert C. Blake Senior Ministries is supported by faithful covenant partners around the world. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Your station for smooth hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. 104.1 WDLT. Welcome to this week's edition of From the Pastor Study. Of course, I am Dr. Henry Roberts, your host and founding pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. I'm excited. Uh, all this week we've been celebrating uh, the 23 years of our church anniversary and, and monumental occasion. And I am so blessed uh, this week to have a, a group of pastors from throughout the Gulf Coast and, and locally to come and share in this meeting. And many of them are a part of our international fellowship. We call it the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministry. And I am so pleased to have each and every one of these men of God here today to share with us on From the Pastor Study. I'm gonna do this and let them introduce themselves to you uh, following from my, uh, my immediate right hand all the way over to that next corner. God bless you, Pastor. Great to have you. Won't you tell people your name, who you are, and what's the name of your church, and where you're from? Yes, uh, my name is Jermaine Gatson. I'm the pastor of Faith Ministries, which is located in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, in the Homewood area. And we're just there ministering to the word of, ministering to the people, the word of God, the word of faith. And uh, we're just excited to be on the broadcast today. Amen. God bless you. I am uh, Bishop Dr. Henry Williams from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I am the proud pastor of the House of the Lord, Spirit of Life Ministry. And uh, we are just about trying to build families, build relationships, and uh, to empower people so that they may become what God has called them to be from the teaching of God's Word. Yes, I have, I have a pastor found at Resurrection Temple House of Prayer. I'm also supposed to be locked out of Camp of Florida. Our mission in Tampa and all over the world is to seek out and save that which is lost to any means necessary minister to the old man and in Jesus name do himself. Hello, my name is uh, Bishop Lynn Morrison Jr. from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm the founding pastor of Word of Faith Christian Church and the assignment from God is to teach his people faith. Amen. Amen. I am Pastor Harry Thomas from Fresh from Heaven Ministries in Baton Rouge, Louisiana where we are transforming spectators into participators in the kingdom of God. Our assignment is to teach the principles of God's word that can be lived out in everyday life. Well, praise the Lord. I'm Apostle David Kaiser, Jr., and I'm the founding pastor of Rightly Dividing the Word Church of God, located here in the beautiful city of Mobile, Alabama, where we are building a people of power, purpose, and praise. Amen. I, I invited these brothers here just to share a little bit about whatever God may be doing on their hearts and, and individual in their ministries in particular and, and how 
your walk with God has really been a blessing in your life. I don't know where to start, uh, but it, it, it just, I, I guess I'll just start in the middle. Apostle uh, Lockett, won't you share with us uh, some of what God is doing in your life and, and the main focus and thrust of your ministry? God is doing some amazing things in my life. He's doing some amazing things in our ministry. Uh, he reached out and, and picked me up. I worked clear, put my feet on solid ground. And in doing so, he taught me to do that, the same thing for other men. We, we've been extensively in the prison ministry, jail ministry, sidewalk Sunday school services. And, and just outreach, we're, we're doing a, a, a mighty work in outreach. We're in the neighborhood, everywhere we need to be, everywhere where their crime is, we try to be there. Everywhere where there's confusion, we try to be there. We do all that we can in Jesus' name. We totally in. We're not just halfway in. We're not trying to fight the enemy from outside of the rain. We are interested in getting in the rain, being the front line runner for the Lord. And he's done some amazing things. I, I saw him turn people's lives around from the prison system. I, I saw him reach out to young children and bring them up and turn their lives around. And this minister to them, the, the creating ministry among our young people is that one can go and tell another one about Christ. They, they can mentor one another. They seem to look out one another extremely well. Big brothers seem to look out for little brother, little sister. We try to fill them up so they can go fill somebody else up. You know, and I believe that's what God has assigned us to do. Now, now how many years, I heard you mention you're going into prisons. How many years you've been going in that prison? We, we've been going into prison right at about 20 years now. Wow. 20 years. Crazy. So a lot of times, when, when sometimes the guys get out of prison, do they come look for you and, and come to make sure, to, to let you know what, what a blessing you've been to them in their lives? Many, many times they do. Uh, not necessarily always, because our main focus is not uh, building ourselves up. Our, our main focus is to build Christ up. So I, I'm satisfied wherever they go, as long as they stay in Christ. As long as they stay in Christ, because they've got to be connected to the source. They've got to be connected to the power. If they're not connected to the vine, and there's no sap running through them, then I know eventually they're going to be right back where they came from, put under the foot of me. But as long as they're connected, they're going to be steady growing and multiplying. And that's what I miss you. Pastor Kyle, won't you share with us some of the things God and the insight God's been giving you and what he's been doing over there in, in South Alabama? Of South Mobile South County Mobile, down there. Mobile, Alabama, amen. Well, listen, I really believe that God is moving. In fact, he is uh, in an awesome way uh, in our church and, and in that local community uh, there, amen. We do things such as, you know, prayer walks uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, we go to those various uh, apartment complexes that are in that particular area and, and saw God move. We sent teams in there two by two. And in fact, we would pair a, a prophet with an evangelist. And they would go and they would knock on doors. And we've seen people save. Uh, I can remember one account where they went in, the team went in, knocked on the door. And there was a young man in there just about to commit suicide. Come on, man. Yeah, had a, had a pistol ready to do it at that particular time. And they was able to counsel that young man and minister to him, you know, get them delivered, uh, get them saved, you know, and, uh, in, in the family of God, you know. And so... Of course, in our personal ministry, you know, God is moving. Uh, uh, the people there are being blessed. They're being taught the principles of God that, that lead to success. You know, I tell people a lot of times, you've got to know what to do in order to be successful in this life. And that's both spiritually uh, and naturally. And so we are, we're doing that, I believe, in an effective way by the grace of God. Uh, Pastor Gasser, you know, yes, you're a young minister. Uh, uh, how old is your church, man? And, and tell us about, you know, what God's doing. Well, our church is about uh, five years old. We started in 2010, and uh, we're in a place right now where I believe we're just really uh, just getting started. For several years, uh, we were in the uh, West End area of Birmingham, Alabama, and we did various outreaches while we were there. We uh, ministered to the homeless. We did uh, back-to-school uh, giveaways. Uh, we did... Uh, giveaways where we uh, did outreach for uh, newlywed mothers where we gave out uh, pampers and diapers and we did all kind of outreach uh, for a short period of time or of course of a few years uh, but then maybe a couple of years ago God kind of 
redirected our focus from uh, not just doing outreach, but also doing spiritual warfare. Mm. And uh, God blessed uh, me last year to be able to write a book on uh, spiritual warfare. It's called Tactics, Trends, and Traits of the Enemy, uh, equipping the believer to fight back. And, uh, of course, you can find that on my website, JermaineGatson.com, and also on our, our church website, FaithMinistriesInc.org. Uh, but last year, God blessed us to move to uh, the Vulcan Parking Museum, wow. where the statue of Vulcan is that oversees uh, the city of Birmingham. Mm. And, of course, you know, some people were kind of iffy about that. Why would you move, you know, your church uh, to that particular location? Because got to come down. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we kind of lost a few people when we changed direction, but, but God kind of really focused our ministry on what he called us to do. And so we spent the last year and a half on top of the mountain where the uh, Vulcan statue was praying and interceding uh, for the city of Birmingham. And actually, uh, this month, God actually blessed us with a new building uh, in the Homewood area of Birmingham. And so we're, we're right there in Homewood right now, and uh, we're working on the building. So we're getting ready to have a, a dedication in a, a couple of months. Bishop Roberts is going to come and do our dedication for us when he can get, in his, get his schedule clear. And uh, so we're just excited about what God is doing. We're in a new season. Uh, we just believe God is moving in a new way, and we're just excited about it. Pastor Harry Thomas, yeah. tell us what's shaking in battery. We're going to turn you loose in a minute, yeah. bitch. We're about to see you let him go. Loose that man and let him go. Come on, Pastor Thomas. Tell I see him yeah. biting at the jump, so I had to jump the other way. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are, we are just seeing God do some tremendous, tremendous things. We've uh, kind of lately focused on Generation X. I think the enemy is focused on that 23 to 35 year old age group. Yes. And uh, the college. Might need kids, to back that thing down to 18. Yeah, we can go back to 18. Yeah. We're seeing some of those too, the 18, yeah. 15. Uh, we're, we're really uh, having moves of God in our services where they are actually encountering the tangible presence of God, the prophetic, apostolic presence of God. Uh, people are being healed, being delivered. All manner of diseases are being healed. Uh, our Sunday services are basically revival services. I mean, kids are running to the church. I can't wait to get to church. We've talked to some of the parents of some of these Generation Xs that are my age or a little younger, and uh, they said they've never heard their kids excited about church before. And they're, they're calling their college friends. They're calling their business friends. And uh, our main goal is to cause them or teach them how to impact their sphere of life, their marketplace ministry, their families. Uh, we're seeing uh, their family members getting saved. Uh, we're seeing their coworkers getting saved. Uh, in the process of all of this, we're seeing them get promoted. Prosperity is coming into their lives. Um, God is just being who he said he would be. Uh, you know, his kingdom is being manifest in their lives. And we're doing outreaches in the uh, neighborhoods, uh, going into apartment complexes, taking uh, trailers uh, with hot dogs and uh, free drinks. And right. we call it a prayer outreach. And we'll give them hot dogs, free drinks, and ask them if anybody needs prayer. And uh, we've had great turnouts with people coming out for prayer and, and getting healed and getting delivered. And, uh, it's just been a great time in the Lord, and Amen. we're seeing this happen on a regular basis. On a regular yeah. basis. On a Amen. regular Amen. basis. Pa Amen. Pa uh, Bishop Williams, Amen. tell us about how the Lord burning up Hattiesburg Amen. over there. Amen. God bless you. He's, uh, he's doing a mighty work, and uh, we're just so pleased that God chose us. Um, Amen. That uh, he would use us. I want to say to this pastor to be encouraged. Uh, one of the things that the word said, uh, you didn't lose nobody that he gave you. So for those that you lost, you know, they weren't yours anyway. So I want to encourage you. That's that. good. Let me tell you one of the things that we are doing. We, we're doing, um, if I may, um, uh, a few things in uh, Hattiesburg. And we are equipping, encouraging, and um, uh, getting people ready uh, to, um, uh, to go into this world. I, I think when we look now, um, in a lot of areas, and I know particularly in Hattiesburg, uh, we have in our church now, uh, we have grandmothers that are 30 years old. Um, Just that, the that truth. may not mean anything, but it does to us in yes. terms of what we see. 
Because when we start looking at the grandmother being 30, and this is a general statement. Yes. Um, I know in our Pacific area, but when we look at a 30-year-old grandmother and children that she's raising and uh, have never had God, because most of them that we evangelize, uh, we find that they have not had God, and not only just the mothers or the grandmothers, but the mothers as well that have never been church, then uh, it becomes, uh, we understand that the work that God has given us in order to teach them, first of all, who God is. Uh, and that's first, and that's paramount to us in terms of the work that he has assigned us. And then when, he, uh, when we work with our people and bringing them to Christ, for them to accept Christ, we then go into a program that we have to, uh, to equip and, and to encourage them and to make sure that they are ready to go out into the world we then concentrate on building families yes. and working together in building relationships. Mm -hmm. And so when we get into this area, that's when we begin to equip them. There are many things that we are doing. We're teaching them uh, how to run homes, how to have Christ in your homes, and how that works together. Parenting skills. Parenting yes. skills. Wow. Yes. That we are working with them and how to manage money. Yes. How to do things like that so that it become worthwhile to them because you can bring them into church and give them Christ, but if they don't have anything when they leave, then, uh, then you're not going to have them that long. So we have to teach them. Uh, that's the only way that they are going to be empowered is that they need to be taught. And so we have taken on the responsibility from the Lord that we would build these families and then we would teach them how to uh, build relationships. So you we know, have I don't want to cut you off. 24, 25 years ago, people told me People wouldn't be showing up to hear nobody just teach yeah. the word. And, and that's right. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm we, still here 23 years later. That's man. exactly right. And I've been at it a little while myself now. So you better get you a hoop because yeah. ain't nobody coming over there to hear now, that. And, that yeah. and they don't want the hoop for me. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah. that's, that's for yeah. the younger guys. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I'm going to teach them. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and then that way they'll, uh, they'll understand. I don't have anything to, against the uh, the yes, sir. I'm all for it. I'm just yeah. saying what, what I was told. Yeah. You mentioned that how important.